Hey, happy whatever day you're looking at this video, dudes and dudettes. Uh, I am, of course, the Mystical Green Beanie, and a couple months ago, I pitched my ideals for a Guardians of the Galaxy game and a Superman game, and those videos did pretty well, so I thought, why not give you guys my ideals on a Flash game that I had kicking around my head for a while now. So, as always, starting off with the controls, I'm going to be using the PS4 controller as a template because that's the system that I own. But I'm sure if you have a PC controller or an Xbox controller, you'll see that it doesn't really matter because they're pretty much the same. So starting off with the character movement, you can move the flash by moving the L3 bumper. And you can move the camera by moving the R3 bumper. You can jump by tapping the X button, while double tapping the X button will cause the flash to speed dash, which is basically a dodge. As for the basic melee attacks, you can strike an enemy by tapping the square button. However, in order to perform a heavier attack, also known as your power attack, you have to tap the triangle button. Meanwhile, the circle button allows you to grapple your enemies. As for the bumpers, I already explained that R3 manipulates the camera while L3 moves the character around. But then there's the R1 bumper. Pressing and holding this can allow you to slow down time and enter a first person perspective, while the L1 bumper activates your intangibility. Finally, we have the R2 bumper, which allows you to run at super speeds, and the L2 bumper, which can be used to change your perspective from third person to first person. Note, you can only enter the first person perspective in this right while running. And finally, there's the D-pad, and you can press any one of the arrows to perform a taunt. Alright, so now that the basic controls are out of the way, let's talk about the combat. So, as I already mentioned, you can attack enemies by pressing square and triangle. However, you can chain these attacks together to perform a combo. And as you progress throughout the game, you can unlock more and more combos. As I mentioned previously, you can temporarily slow down time and enter a first person perspective by holding down the R1 bumper. This is so that when you're in a room filled with enemies, you can thin out the crowd by pressing the R1 bumper and aiming the center focus on any enemy and pressing square. And while still holding R1, you can aim your center focus at another enemy and another enemy and another enemy. And once you release, you can dash attack all those enemies in one fell swoop. This attack has a name, and it's called the One Felt Swoop. Although, don't think that you can spam this move in this game. That will never exist, because performing this move can deplete your adrenaline by almost a quarter. And don't worry, I'm going to elaborate on that right now. So, in the game, there's going to be an adrenaline meter. You can build up your adrenaline by performing combos and taunting your enemies. And once you've built up enough adrenaline, you can perform the One Felt Swoop. However, once you've built up your adrenaline meter completely, you can become intangible for a certain amount of time. And as stated previously, you can activate your intangibility by tapping L1. Alright, and now onto the thing that you all came here for. Running at super speeds. Now I've heard a lot of people say that making a Flash game is impossible because there's no possible way to capture the speed of the Flash. Because then that will make him too hard to control. And that's where my idea comes in. So, in Infamous Second Son and Infamous First Light, when you're running through Seattle, you're probably going about the same speed as a slow moving car. However, notice when you're aiming your neon attacks, time slows down. And what I propose is that when you're running as the Flash, you'd be running more or less at a similar speed as Fetch and Delson are in Infamous, but time around you would be slowed down as well. I mean, of course you'd be running a little faster than Delson, and your base speed would be more akin to Fetch's speed in First Light when she runs through neon speed boost clouds. You can also enter lightning mode when you're running. This can temporarily speed you up a bit, and you can activate lightning mode while you're running by holding the triangle button. However, in doing so, this can deplete your adrenaline. You can also do what's called a speed jump. Again, much like Infamous First Light, Second Sun, and even I think in Saints Row 4. While you're running, you can press the X button, and that will send you hurtling into the sky at incredible heights because inertia and motion and stuff? I mean, I, I passed physics in high school by the skin of my teeth, so I, I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, but anyways, let's move on to the story. So basically, the game opens in Medias Res, and Central City has been taken over by Gorilla Grodd, and Wally West, the Kid Flash, is running through the newly crowned Gorilla City, trying to find Barry Allen. And then we cut back to a few days ago, where we see the rogues battling the Flash and Kid Flash, and of course they beat the rogues and throw them in jail, because that's just how that goes. And later, while in confinement, the rogues are visited by Gorilla Grodd, and Grodd breaks them out of Iron Heights and he gives them superpowers. Then he proposes that they all take over Central City, and the rogues collectively say no, because they don't want to take over the world or hurt anybody, they just want to rob banks. And he takes over their minds, and he uses them to take over Central City, and escort his guerrilla army into the city as well. 
and throughout the game you'd be fighting Grodd's army and the mind controlled members of the rogues as either Flash or Kid Flash. And the game ends with the Flash and Kid Flash freeing the rogues of their mind control and they all take down Gorilla Grodd and his army together. And at the end of the campaign you get to free roam a non-evil gorilla controlled central city as well as stop crimes and save civilians in side missions. As for the overall aesthetic of the game, I'd want for it to look a lot more like the comics and I'd probably go for a more cel shaded look just to add on to the comic booky tone of the game. And finally, the voice cast for this game, that will never exist, uh, should be the same people in my opinion who voiced the Flash family in Young Justice. I just feel like they did a fantastic job and I would love to hear them voicing those characters once again. So yeah, that's my pitch for a Flash game. And you know what, look, I, I know these games are never going to be made, but it's really fun to just spit bullshit sometimes. But in any case, what are your thoughts on this game that will, again, never exist? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Does it sound like something you would play if it did exist? Let me know down below in the comment section. Also, if you like this video, please hit the like button, share support the channel, and if you want to see more content like this, all you have to do is subscribe. I'm the Mystical Green Beanie, thanks for watching, and as always, until next time, adios nachos. Charged up.